I'm Liz Feld. I'm the president of the Suzanne Wright Foundation and the Code Purple Initiative. Suzanne Wright was a very good friend of mine, and I learned so much from her uh, during our relationship at Autism Speaks. I worked for her and for Bob over there. And when she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, um, one of the first things she said, um, which was not a surprise, was that we have to do something about this. And so going back to you know over a year ago now, um, Bob and Suzanne and I talked about what we could do uh, to address the really the urgency or the lack of urgency around such a devastating disease. So I uh, took this on as a um, both a personal and a professional mission. What was most shocking to me from the beginning was just the pure statistics around mortality, uh, which was which I didn't know either until Suzanne was diagnosed. Um, you know, 45,000 people dying every year, 91% of the patients who are diagnosed will die, many of them in the first year. I mean, those are just raw facts. There's no way to spin them or um, massage them. And the fact that that number hasn't changed in almost 50 years, and yet the uh, the approach and the attitude about it has been the same, is really where, the, where my outreach comes from. Uh, obviously, there's a whole issue around of funding, federal funding, and the lack of focus and attention and prioritization, but really it's really about urgency. If you know, 50,000 people die every year from something, usually that's on the front page of the New York Times. You know, during the Vietnam War, almost 50,000 Americans died, and you know, we're still talking about that, and that was 40 years ago. And here we are, this has happened every single year, and yet uh, somehow pancreatic cancer is at, really at the bottom of the priority list of the cancers when you talk about, certainly about federal, federal funding and federal resources. Where and how can we save the most lives right off the bat is with early detection. Immediately, if we had a, you could save 10% of the people who were diagnosed every year. Right there, you're just talking about four, almost 5,000 people a year. So yes, we need curative treatments. We certainly need more clinical trials and interventions, but if you're just from a pure numbers standpoint, going to look at where we could have the greatest impact right away would be on an early detection test. So again, our, our job is to work with other organizations to help enlighten these folks who are in a position of influence to really do something about it. And part of that is about funding and part of it's just about making it a priority, recognizing that it's unconscionable that in 2017, every single day, we lose 117 people. You know, Bob Wright, um, every meeting we have, at the end of the meeting he'll say, you know, five people just died while we were sitting here. And a lot of people won't say that out loud. It's uncomfortable. Uh, part of what we're trying to do is make people uncomfortable. It's, they shouldn't feel good at the end of the meeting that they have us. They should feel motivated to get, you know, to get involved and to help in any way that they can. Code Purple is our call for a bold new approach to pancreatic cancer research. Here's what we know. We've got a whole trove of federal research assets sitting at the National Cancer Institute and the NIH, clinical data, information about cancer research that's been done. We also know that there have been tremendous advances in bioinformatics and supercomputing and computational biology in the private sector. Our goal with Code Purple and our new approach calls for the combined, combining these two assets and driving capabilities to come up with an early detection test and early treatments. You've got assets over here at the federal government, you've got private sector resources and technologies and tools that can be brought to bear to help leverage these assets, then you've got a winning formula. And our approach in Washington and our conversations with senators and members of Congress and the White House has been to say, look, these things are sitting right in front of us. All we need to do is put them together and go forward because the very conservative model that we have right now, it, certainly on the federal research side, has not worked for pancreatic cancer. It's worked for other cancers and worked in other areas. It hasn't worked here. So we want to marry all the best of the private sector and all the taxpayer-funded research that's been done at the federal level to drive um, early detection tests, curative treatments, and progress for pancreatic our goal is to grow the funding pool and the pool of support for the broader pancreatic cancer community by raising awareness. We think we can e increase all the funding. We can increase, again, the urgency and the support, drive clinical trial enrollment by making physicians more aware of what's out there, making patients more aware, all by raising awareness. So we've been aggressively running a digital immediate campaign in Washington to try to influence policy leaders. We have a national public service announcement that's been airing on cable television for the last couple of months. And again, it's really to help 
people understand, yeah, this is not acceptable. These numbers or these statistics are not okay. And we can do something about it with the right focus and the right resources. There would have been no bigger champion for this cause than Suzanne if she had lived. I assure you, we'd probably be done and out of business and moved on to the next thing if she had been here to work on this herself. That's, um, that's what inspires me every day because she was uh, an asset to everything that she put her mind and her heart to. And as Bob characterized her, you know, she was just an advocate cut down too soon. So this disease lost a great champion. And I keep that in my mind all the time when I do this. And the personal stories that we've heard over the last nine months, one is more... Um, impactful and meaningful than the next. People lost spouses, parents, grandparents, nieces, nephews, and those are not just statistics, those are real people, and in their own ways they were contributing the way Suzanne contributed as an advocate. So um, I just see her as the lead advocate, uh, and that's why I'm inspired all the time. Code Purple, demand a new approach.